Right, construction continues on the ATST. You can see that I've put the nose plate in. Very easy to put in. You can also see that I've put the uh, front gun mount in as well. That just sits in there as you can see, just clips in. You've got these few braided wires that go on the bottom there. Again, very, very um, delicate to cut off the sprue, so be careful. And when you sand where, where the bits on, when you cut it off, just glue those into place. Um, this plate here as well, that's pushed into place with the actual ball joint mounting area for the ball. That was very easy to push in as well. You got the back plate, which connected into the back of the uh, command area. That was very easy to put in. Then you've got uh, this plate here, that plate, that plate, and then you've got this circular area with the um, gun mounts, all very easy to push in, both sides as you can see. So that's the headpiece. Now, the roof. You basically got two pieces, one underneath there, and then you glue, you, you mount that on top of there. You get the two options for the actual hatch. You can have a hatch open or a hatch closed. I use the hatch closed option. And then you've got the rail in here, which is all one piece. Just drop a glue in each hole and push that in. You can see at the front there, there's no support. It just pushes down. I wish there had been some support in the middle. Now, on the back of there, you've got these little mounting holes. And there's one there as well. But you can see that I've actually removed the mounting tabs. There's a little square tab there. There was a little square tab there. A square tab there, a square tab there, and a little mount, little round rectangular mounting notch that was on the top of the dashboard. I've took all those off. I've cut them off with my cutters. Just went in as flat as I could and just snipped them off and then filed them down my file because I wanted this to lift off. I didn't want it to put, I didn't want it to be pushed into place and then not being able to remove it. So you can all go do is just lift that off and you can see inside the command area. Now, pushing that back on, there's a little bit of a gap there, but I'm not worried about that. Because like I said, I want, you, I, want, I, want, I want you to see the inside. You've also got the um, nose mounting gun, which is four pieces. Um, as it says on the plans there, you can see. And then you've got this side bit which goes in that side there, because which is uh, four pieces there. And then last but not least, you've got that gun which goes in the side there, which is all that there. But construction, the main construction is complete. It's just the final assembly that needs doing now. Stay with me. Right, welcome back. As you can see, all the parts are now primed. Um, I basically took the knee braces off the knees, just slipped it off, because I didn't want to try and get underneath with my brush and my cat spray can. As you can see, both sides are now primed on the knees. The legs are more primed. Not too bad at all. Then you've got the belly. I've managed to get in all the nooks and crannies, which I was quite surprised with. Then you've got the nose mounted gun, that's all primed. And then you've got the side mounting gun with the shield, that's all primed. I was thinking about taking the shield off but I managed to get the spray underneath. And then you've got the headpiece. Now using the closed option eye holes, I push those in to create, so, to create an eye seal so the primer wouldn't get in. I'll be popping those off and actually using the open option eye holes. And then you've got the actual top of the head, just putting some double sided sticky tape underneath to create a nice seal, so again none of the primer would get in. So hopefully when I take that lid off and the eye holes off, no primer had gone into the cockpit. And now the ATST is ready for paint. Stay with me. Right, welcome back. As you can see, 
using the XF80 Raw Light Grey in Tamiya, I've painted all the bits to the ATST. You see, it's got not gone down too bad. It's only the first coat. I'm going to look it here, it here in there, see if it, certain sections might need a second coat. I might just go all over with a second coat. I basically, with the knees, I took the knee guards off, painted behind it, wait for it to dry, and pop the knee guards back into place. Same as on that one as well. Not bad at all. Now, I haven't painted on the bottom. I've just left that in the primer grey because I'm going to glue that to the base. You can also see the belly as well. All done underneath. I actually took those guards off as well. That Those two guards and those two guards and painted underneath and put them back on again. But you can see the contrast between that and the actual ball where that is. That's just left in normal primer colour. Painted the weapons as well. A bit hard to get into the nooks and crannies, but not too bad. I couldn't get that shield off, so I just left that on and rubbed my brush underneath, and that's all painted. The lid is finally come off, and I've painted that. I haven't done underneath. I couldn't be asked. You can see that I've also popped off the um, eye guards. And then you can see that it's all not too bad. You can see some of the streaks there. Like I said, I've got to put a second coat on. But that first coat ain't looking too bad. Stay with me. Okay, and welcome back. Now the ATST is pretty much done, it's time to start work on the base. You can see that I've got the same bit of plank that I used uh, for the Monster House. I've got a bit left. Using some um, a metre length of um, balsa square dowling, uh, one centimetre thick. Got it from Hobbycraft for £3.50 if I recall correctly. Just use some, some PVA glue. Could put some all the way around the edges. Left it 24 hours to dry and just filled the joinage gaps with some filler. I'm going to be mounting the kit base onto this base. But, much like the Munster House, the kit base is all hollow. And the only trouble is there wasn't that gap to the edge of the lip so I could use some more sheet plastic. So I filled it in with some normal household filler. Sanding it down, you can see there's a lot better smooth surface so I can glue this to the base with no problem. But for those of you who are going to use the kit base by itself, use the filler. Because it's made this base a hell of a lot more heavier than it would do if it was hollow. Because if you put the ATST on this, there's a danger, because it's so bloody light and flimsy, the ATST will tip over. So fill it in to make it a lot more heavier. And then, basically what I'm going to do, is I'm going to put that in the corner... And then I'm going to PVA glue that in. And then I'm going to fill this area in completely to make me a better surface. And to which I will show you in future updates what I plan to do with this base. Stay with me. Right, as you can see, I've now filled in the base. I found in the cupboard some silicon sealant in a gun and there was only about that much left in the bottle so I thought you know what I'm going to use that just to get rid of the bottle out of my cupboard because originally I was going to use the filler anyway using the gun to uh, dispense it into the um, actual base and then using my uh, little um, pallet spreader just spread it across all the way around took me a while to get it just right but I got there in the end and I've left it 24 hours to dry because you could see it is bouncy hard. Is it? <laughs> bouncy hard. <laughs> anyway, I've also got a little bit of thin foam packaging. And I've, I'm going to make an ice, that's made an ice wall. So as you can probably guess, I'm going to book the trend and build this to Hoth. Now picking up a tip off YouTube using some PVA, some normal acrylic artist paint. 
and some bicarbonate of soda, baking soda. I'm going to put a snow effect on here. But that's not the only thing I'm going to do. I've also got some little Star Wars miniatures. As you can see. I've got two little rebel troopers with their guns. I've got, oh, and I've got two snow troopers. And I've got a snow trooper with a laser turret. These are Wizards of the Coast miniatures. The uh, Those four cost me about two to three pounds each. And then this one cost me 11 pound each, which is the cheapest one I could get. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting them off the bases, especially on the laser turret, I'm going to trim that base down, and then I'm going to mount them to this, and then do my snow effect. So I think it's going to look really good. An ATST on Hoth. Stay with me. Okay. So the silicon sealing didn't work. I'm back to square one. I mean, it did dry, as you can see. But gluing my Wizards of the Coast figures onto the surface, the glue would just wouldn't dry. It wouldn't get tacky. It would just sit on the surface saying, Hello, I'm not going to dry for you. I used the glue and glaze. I even resorted to super glue. The glue just sat on the surface and just would not dry. So, using my heavy duty knife, just cut round the edges and round there as well. And then using the other end of my knife, just got underneath and just pulled it out. Luckily, it didn't do any damage to the wall. And you can see that it's all out. But at the end of the day, you know, I had to use it because to get rid of the bottle. So it looks like I'm going to have to use my normal household filler. Stay with me. Success. After the um, failure of the silicon sealant, I've gone back to the normal household filler. Using my little spatula pallet knife, filled it about halfway up and spread it all the way around. Left it overnight to dry. And then this morning, just before I went shopping, it was a beautiful day outside. So I just uh, filled it up to the top of the dowling. Again, with my spatula, smoothed it all out and left it outside to dry. By the time I got back from shopping, it was dry as a bone. Now, you can see all my little miniatures are on the base now. And using my glue and glaze, I've uh, glued the uh, snow trooper with the laser to it to the base. And only after a few minutes, it's already started to dry. With the uh, rebel troopers and the snow troopers, I've cut them completely off the bases. And then just drop a super glue on each of their feet. And then held them down. And then using my fine tip of my glue and glaze. Just went round the edges of the feet underneath. And they're drawing an absolute treat. All I've got to do now is a snow effect. Stay with me.